Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, welcome back to our Chicago Pro Prep. Today, we are now three weeks and three days out. Coming down to it. And 20, what did we say? 20 days out from flying. Yeah, 20 days out from flying. I fly out on my birthday, so. Ooh, happy birthday. <laughs> celebrate on the plane. <laughs> No cake, no surprises yet until after the show. So we are <laughs> sharing our journey. If you haven't been tuned in, thanks for watching along and all your comments and everything. Appreciate it, guys. Glad you like us just training and going through the process. So for today, on prep to update you, my conditioning came really quick off some last changes I made. About midweek, I pulled... 60 grams of carbs out on my training days and about 30 grams of fat on my off days. The off day diet pretty much maintains my body weight because I'm not training, I'm still doing cardio. But that 60 gram pull has, has been bringing me down pretty quick. And uh, I went from 211 over the weekend, I was around 209 and then I hit 208. And yet last night I decided I'm, I'm gonna have like a, a some, add some sushi in and then I dropped even more. I dropped a 1.2 pounds and I was like 207.6, which he, is- He looks crispy. Yeah, like Very crispy. glute lines are fully in. Um, I'm hard, I feel really fresh too. And so I'm pretty far ahead. So actually today, I'm getting more sushi. We're gonna take you along and show you the sushi that, that we do post, post training. Um, then for Renee, you are moving along like crazy. <laughs> So like, what about me? <laughs> You're just better at explaining everything. Yeah, well, like he's at, much better at articulating than I am. How, how do you how do you feel at this this point of prep? I actually feel pretty good. Um, this week has been a complete change from the previous week because previous week, if you guys watched the last couple of videos, yeah. I was. Feeling pretty crappy. Yeah, like fatigue was really high. Fatigue was high, sleep was poor, um, a lot of just mental fog, um, just overall not feeling great. Training wasn't that great. Because the last, the last training session we did, we did like a devolume session with her, ran some lower volume, but then that, then you had like some really good nights of sleep, mm -hmm. recovery jumped up traumatically. And um, then you really started progressing along. Yeah. And that was even with, when you finally felt like that, pushing you now. Mm -hmm. So you're back, she does like 20 minutes now on the Stairmaster instead of on the treadmill. Um, there wasn't a dramatic food reduction, but still it's, it's lower. Like you're right around like 1,400, like 1,435 calories on training days. Yeah. Off days are like a little over 1,200. But the rest of the time, it's just 20 minutes of Stairmaster, the rest of the time is just walking, so it's pretty low effort. And that's been pulling, pulling her down really good. This past week, she dropped three pounds, looked significantly tighter throughout every shot, um, especially throughout her like quad to hamstring and that upper hip area. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, logbook's progressing well. Um, yeah, training, training has been great, honestly. Um, strength has increased, which is really cool being this deep into prep. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's that's like, if you want good muscle retention or prep, like that's your number one tool to go off of. Like if, if gym performance is dropping down, something needs to change. You're either training too much or you're not recovering enough. So what area can you work on to improve? Sometimes the timeline gets pushed fast and you have to just kind of accept some performance to drop off and it might with body weight lowering but there's a lot that you can do like if you have certain movements that require a lot of stability component like mm -hmm. uh a, like a free free barbell squat moving to a smith machine or then moving to like a pendulum squat something more braced to where it's not overall as systemically taxing can save some of that fatigue and, and help not dip so much into your recovery resources, but still give you the training stimulus that you need to hold that tissue. But we've done well with Renee. Like she's pretty much maintained her same volume. Definitely keeping effort high is what I would go to over trying to keep all these sets in place. You, you can get away doing just a few sets that are hard. And that's what I believe in those, those hard reps um, that are getting closer to muscle failure. Being more stimulating than just doing more sets 
um, farther away from failure. I think more sets accumulates a lot more fatigue than this those last couple reps. People argue back and forth on this, mm -hmm. but um, and, and especially the perception of effort is a lot harder on those last reps. So if you're going off, hey, I'm going to keep sure. a few reps in the tank those few reps in the tank might be really, really far away from getting into some good stimulating reps and close to failure just off of your perception of that. So if you're taking it farther to the end, you kind of have a clear marker of where you're truly at or you're not. But um, anyway, she's doing great, like progresses along. Um, I'm having sushi, so Renee's so, in such a great spot too. I'm like, Renee can have sushi too. Renee can have sushi. <laughs> so it's not gonna be anything crazy like upping calories and carbs like I will. Um, and I'll, I'll, we'll explain what we do when we get to it and why I have her picking what she does. But we'll get into train now. We're going to head to the gym. It's my push day, which I don't know if it's push day A or B, but today is more a, a little bit more of a shoulder focus day. So, And then Renee is actually doing her only one upper body session she does, and that's a wellness setup for you. It's mainly like three, day, three days a week of lower body, one upper body session. And the volume is rock bottom. <laughs> It's fucking it's like, like, it's like even, it's like one set per, per muscle group nearly. Um, one kind of hard set, nothing like to failure. We don't want to generate a ton of fatigue today. So we'll head to the gym and hit it. So first exercise for me guys will be a machine lateral raise. I really like this one. For one, it's my shoulder focus day. So I want to start with the weakest body part. One I want to bring up the most, which is that, that side lateral head of, of the delt. And I don't feel like it limits me pressing in my movements. So I can start with it. I'm gonna do three hard sets here. I prefer the machine lateral raise because you get good constant tension throughout the full range of motion for the delt, opposed to just a, a dumbbell raise where it's just a little bit of tension at the top. So I get, feel like you get the most out of this one. Um, I'll do three hard sets here. So I work up hard set of 12 to 15, and I'll keep reducing the load to stay within that rep range. And what I like to think about mentally here is I don't put my hands on, on the grips because it tends, people tend to externally rotate out that arm and use a lot of the front delt. So I'll keep my hands off with thumbs kind of pointed down slightly. And as I come up, I'm thinking reach out to the walls and don't shrug the shoulder. So it's just reaching up to here. The rest of the movement to raise it higher is all gonna be trapped. So it's just reach out to the wall where the delt stops, that's where you stop. So we'll hit those three sets here. My first top set was um, 175. So I'll try to try to go up there or hit more reps with that target weight. And one thing I'll show you that's cool that I use um, are these gym pins. So you can add, so the stack, I stacked it out, but you can add these on, get gym pin and just be able to incrementally load or if you're stacked out, you can actually go up and wait. So the first movement that I'm doing is the same movement that John's doing, um, the machine lateral raise, which I was doing dumbbell lateral raises for a while. Um, that has been a really challenging move for me to kind of perfect. So the machine lateral is so much easier for me to keep my form and get a really good connection with my shoulders. I'm just trying not to hold him back because I do like a fraction of what he does. He's like doing the entire stack plus some and I do like 45. So I finished out my machine lateral raise, which was good. I went up uh, two and a half pounds on that one. On my first and third set, I upped the rep too. So strength is really good today. Moving on to a Smith machine incline press, about 45 degrees. That's where I can still get some upper chest. This is a shoulder focus day, but I just start with an incline press. 
but the tip on this one is to make sure your humerus is moving in the angle of your upper pec fibers. So it should be slightly cocked in, moving up this way. If it's way angled out when you're pressing, it's gonna be a lot more to the front delt. Also, you could probably be more, if you have like shoulder pain pressing, you might be going too wide. So you notice I cock in a little bit. The grip, I keep my elbow and wrist right directly in line in the bottom. So I'm not overly wide, I'm not doing close grip, that's gonna favor more tricep. Too wide, it's gonna take away range of motion. So that's the, some of the cues that I look for in this one. On this one, I do a dead stop pause for safety reasons, but also to make sure I'm really mindful and I'm pressing with my chest. So you'll see me pause on the bottom. I'm gonna work up to a top set. Last time I hit 285, I think for nine. So I'm probably gonna go up a little bit in load and try to match the rep if I can. And then I'll do a back off set with a lighter load, more so between that 10 to 15 rep range. about sushi um, so Renee's setup for her upper right days goes from the weakest muscle group to her strongest I think that's how you should program pretty much in general and also for females like usually that top line the upper chest the delts that's a focal point for Renee like her back is incredibly strong point and it'll grow like when we did a lot of upper body it grows like crazy so she has up her, her back work last um, what's been it's still a good point for her, but like me, like she'll train uh, side delt first, since it doesn't limit her pressing. She'll go into a shoulder press, and then from there, we have programmed a rear delt. So that's kind of going in order from like weakness without taking anything away from like compound movement work. Um, so here she's just doing like a rear delt cable fly, uh, single arm. Because with you, you've been able to connect better single arm. Oh yeah, definitely. I've tried all kinds of, you know, I've tried all kinds of different, like rear delt, dumbbell. I like, just can never get get that form down. Yeah. So the single arm, she's been able to actually fo focus in on actually the rear delt, and the, the, finally the execution looks on point with it. Which, you know, you want to, you'll you'll see it. Like you want your humerus to be moving in line with the rear delt fibers. So a lot of times her elbow would drop low and she'd start bringing her back in. <laughs> I was, Go I was the trap queen. <laughs> yeah, was so traps. it'd be like some Terry's major and lat or like doing uh, doing trap work for her like lateral raises, raising the shrug and shrug, like I was talking about earlier. Yeah, I remember last year when I was um, prepping, like my traps looked like no, she was like getting like, like a linebacker. Huge. Like, <laughs> we're cover your hair with that shit, like damn. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's that's uh, at least we're going to finishing up shoulder work for her. All right, so on my incline Smith press, um, I felt really strong today. But being this like three weeks out and, and, and realizing large load progressions can leave you very susceptible to connective tissue injuries just because you don't have the recovery capacity that you did. Um, this can especially be the case if you're like increasing performance enhancing drugs, especially ones you see people use a lot. I, I'm not, my husband's very, pretty steady um, across what I've been doing, but a lot of the compounds people implement at the end have a, have a large strength component to them, uh, especially how they act in the nervous system. So you can have large strength jumps, and this is especially like when you don't have a great connective tissue repair. So taking these large load progressions 
I would be cautious with. So what I do is take the smallest unit of progression and load and then let the reps work out from there. So I did 285 for nine, my last Smith press today, I went up to 290. So I put two and a halfs on and I matched the reps my back offset, um, I did 255 last time, I did 260 today, so, so again, a five pound progression, but I hit a two extra reps. Rather than like adding 30 pounds on and hitting the same reps, which is a lot more risky for injury, um, just take a small load, load progression, and I can always keep increasing load next time in the small increments, rather than taking big jumps at once. Um, moving on to hammer strength press now, so I hit some upper pec, gonna move down to like lower pec fibers. Same thought process here, I want the humerus move moving in line with those pec fibers. And so we're gonna get it like from a different angle now. Um, I take a little bit closer grip on these because that's how I feel my pec work the most. And I get, get a great range of motion out of doing it. Same, same thing here, I'm gonna work up to a set of like eight to 10, back off and wait to hit something like 12 to 15 reps for, a work, for two work sets. down, keeping the elbow tucked in, tight to the body, hitting a little emphasis, a little bit more lower lat. Then we have her move on to another elbow finishing point. So not quite all the way tucked in. Elbow comes out about 30, 40 degrees to the body. So it's still lat, hitting some trap, but I don't have Renee doing any like really um, elbows wide, 90 degree out from the body, upper back rowing because her traps are so prominent. So this will give a little bit of trap stimulus, but um, that, that's really gonna be it for her backwards. So one set of piece on those. And you see the like the path that uh, Renee takes on these, it, it's, a, it's almost like a pendulum motion, which is how your lat really functions. So people, if, you, if you're like rowing straight up, right to your side, you see that wrist come into the body. Uh, it's end up focusing a lot on your bicep and not hitting a lot of back. So it should be like this arching motion, hip back to the pocket. But anyway, I finished my uh, my flat press, which was excellent. <laughs> I hit an extra rep in my top set, which it just felt, I feel locked in. I've been getting some more tissue work done and active release therapy and Graston. And it's made a huge difference in my the stability component and how fresh I feel like coming into my pressing. I have a lot of issues in my like coracle brachialis, pec minor from a, a lack of strength in my rotator cuff. So getting all this stuff worked on has been tremendous uh, throughout prep. So I hit upper pec fiber, kind of mid pec fiber, gonna go into like a, a more of a decline fly position. Humerus now going down low, hit more of your lower pec fibers. Gonna do two top two sets there. Nothing low rep, because I already did some low rep, so I stay more just 12 to 15 reps on these two sets. Um, and, and that will wrap up more of my just like pet focus in this session. So did my pec work. I go straight into tricep work from here. So I'll do a push down first. And I, I really like the prime handles. For one, you wanna align these up with your shoulder width in a position where you can keep your shoulder, elbow, and wrist all in one line. Like doing the easy bar, 
doing the rope, you get really internally rotated. It's a lot harder to keep that tricep tension throughout. You see a guy like that can't lock out and lose good contraction. So setting up with the prime handle, it, it really lets you optimize your mechanics and, and tailor it to yourself. So with this one, I'll hit a set of eight to 10 in my first set. I've been battling with this progression. It's it's a slow moving one, an isolation movement. So I don't really worry too much about it. Um, try to really make sure my compounds are logged and progressed. Within these, I'm just really being more mindful to make sure I have a good connection. Set of eight to 10, then I'm backing off and wait for a second set in that 12 to 15 rep range. So between my tricep work, I'll get my calf work in. For one, just efficiency, but also it's not taxing another lift to take away. Um, so I'll do the donkey calf raise, but single leg, because two leg, I can stack it out really easy. But also I've had some discrepancies in my left calf. Um, with just movement dysfunction in my left ankle. So I'll focus on my left calf first, then I'll go to my right calf and try to match it. Um, just do two sets here. Calves are like a stronger point and with all the walking that I do, I don't, I don't wanna overtax them for recovery standpoint. So I'll just do two sets here, um, 10 to 12 reps, and then keep going with back and forth tricep work. Next movement I'm doing for triceps since I've done a push down. So I'm doing something closer to a skull crusher to, I call it a JM press. It's kind of like a mix of a close grip bench and a skull crusher. So you're moving a little closer towards the throat. The, the elbow's still bending, but also you do have some shoulder motion. I can't continuously do skull crushers, they beat up my elbow, but I can do these continuously. It allows me to load the stretch part of the tricep and keep my elbows fresh. So I'll do two sets on this JM press, staying in the 10 to 15 rep range on these. And that will wrap up my push day. Did they get it right? Black bag. The black bag no, special. No judgment. <laughs> it's a good place to go. Kintai sushi. That's our the local spot. So done training. Excellent session. Agreed. Yeah, I had had good load rep progressions across everything really pretty much. So for being three weeks out and having a little bit extra food can start taking these moves up so we'll get home and dig into this sushi do you have your special chopsticks yes i do <laughs> so we made it back home from training we have our sushi and our brains are fried right now it's like so time for us to eat and i'm like do we we told them about sushi right we no we we, we told you all about sushi but um I told you, I mentioned yesterday, like my weight had dropped down. I did three sushi rolls yesterday, which there's a, Kintai is the place that I go to and I'll pretty much get just fish and rice rolls, um, pri primarily like, and the main thing is I ask for no mayo. So I try to limit fat. There'll be a little bit of avocado. I limit my salmon. Uh, so I'll mainly go with, with tuna. And so it's not, so di for one digestion is really good that way. But if I go with fat rolls that have a lot of fat to them, um, I get I just it stays with me too long, and then I can't finish the rest of my meal. So I don't want to go that high. Today I'm adding in four sushi rolls because I, I lost weight doing more sushi yesterday, and um, and still no mayo on them. And then for Renee, I look like I have poverty rolls compared to you. <laughs> like, I know. That's, he uh, gets that, and I get this. My sushi roll setup. <laughs> Hey, at least I got sushi though. I guess I can't complain. Yeah, so for Nene, like I moved her macros around a little bit to where she can fit this in. It's not completely exact, but it's really close. And she looks super tight today. In the gym, it, it was just like, like I was telling you, it's nutty. So, um, so we can fit this in and it's not really gonna impact her as far as like her condition coming down. 
and it gives us kind of the mental break on prep that that we want. But what I had her do was one of the rolls that's basically just fish and rice, no mayo on it, nothing fried. It does have some avocado, but it's uh, like mainly tuna based. So there will be a little bit of fat, which I accounted for. And then she'll do one roll that has no rice. It's cucumber and fish and it has uh, some asparagus in it. it. Looks pretty good. Yeah, so we'll have that fit her in, be able to look at her tomorrow and see how that made the impact on her physique, which I don't think it's gonna have any change. If anything, I think she's gonna have a weight drop tomorrow with it. And with mine, I'm hoping my weight comes up and I have some pretty good, good fullness and good recovery. Um, but that is our sushi setup. It's normally not something that I do with a lot of clients, um, except for those that like, like for me, like I'm, I'm really far ahead. Like I'm pretty much ready for this show. Um, if I kept seeing this weight drop happen, I would probably go with increasing food across every meal versus having one really large meal and then you're always playing catch up. Because it is better to spread that nutrition throughout the entire day versus having just one meal where if it does throw off digestion, that's an issue. Um, I also would stick with, with you know, new uh, food choices that are closer to your diet. Like sushi's good because it's like fish and rice that digest well. But going with these really high fat op options don't make a lot of sense. Like a, a burger or a pizza, um, you're not gonna really fill in a lot of intramuscular triglyceride. There's some there to fill out. That's why we do have a little bit of fat in, in, in here, but primarily it's carbohydrate that we want to get that the, the result. So, we are going to watch some some movie, which our attention spans really low, but be something easy watch and enjoy our sushi. But anyway, um, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. As always, thank you for your support. If there's anything that you guys want to see, let us know, and we'll do uh, we'll do more like meal stuff next time. Yeah, you guys. I know y'all are asking about it. And uh, we'll go into that a little bit more, go into like more cardio and our fit trackers and stuff and, and show you how we monitor that and track it throughout the day. If you wanna learn more about my process, you like my explanations of the whys behind how we do things, check out j3university.com. That's my education platform to give you a whole coursework of how to be a better bodybuilder or be a better coach and implement the things that I, I wanna do and uh, how I want to know the whys behind why I do it and make myself as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. So check it out, guys. Again, thank y'all. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.